there welcome to my channel my name is Linda I've got a lot of fun inspiration for you today I also have a sweet soul joining with me today and we hope to bring you lots of fun ideas I'll be explaining that to you a little bit later for now what are we waiting for let's get started so today we're going to be working on some spring crafts using mostly Dollar Tree supplies. So let's get started with project number one. Now for this craft, this paper mache egg actually came from Hobby Lobby, but I am using this candlestick holder from Dollar Tree and they also have ones like these. I think this black one was a last year's model. Um, and then I made a stencil for myself um, using my Cricut Explore 3 machine, but I do know, and I chose vines and hearts. I have seen vines and hearts kind of stencils at Dollar Tree, but I wasn't going to rush out and buy it because I can make my own, of course. And I'm going to use this uh, kind of sage green paint, and I'm going to start painting my paper mache egg. Now, I noticed when I was painting it, I wasn't liking that you could see the strips of the paper on the paper mache. I, I just wanted it kind of camouflage. So I ended up coming back. It made a great base paint, right? Base coat. Coming back with my pouncy brush and pouncing on the paint. And then I heat set it in between. Um, gives it some great, great texture, kind of camouflaging those paper strips. And I do it a couple of coats. And I really love how it turns out because in some places as I'm heat drying and stuff, that texture almost kind of cracks a little bit too. You'll be able to kind of see that as we're working on this egg throughout this project. So here it is. I've laid my stencil on. Now we're working on a round surface. And so you can kind of see the bubbles and stuff in there. So I first start out by taking some scissors and kind of making slits around the edges so it lays a little flatter, trying to, you know, hope for less bleeding on a curved surface. And you could draw on your vines, paint them on, paint hearts. You could just splatter. That would be cute, too. You could use these rub-on transfers. I think would look really pretty. I decided to kind of save this for the tag, but that would be cute. Rub-on words around your projects. Um, you could just, like, find these letter stencils. They have, like, hearts on them and just, you know, stencil hearts on there. All sorts of options to create the egg that you want your design on your egg. So I'm going to use these little pouncy brush again. I'm going to start off with the green paint, same on the egg, and then I'm going to move into, that way it kind of helps with the bleeding. I find this process kind of works nicely, and I'm just painting it with the same color. And then I'll come in with that DIY uh, Debbie's Design Diary white swan paint for my actual stencil. So my process of stenciling is I get the paint onto this pouncy brush, wipe the excess on the lid of the jar, and then I kind of pounce it on and then kind of wipe it off with the brush. Just And I make sure that I have a really thin amount of paint on the brush. Now, I will often get impatient. I've only found this to work with this brand of transfer paper which is by Arteza because it's a thick vinyl-like quality. I tend to get impatient, so I can kind of heat set it a little bit with my heat tool, quick burst. Now, if you look at the stencil right here, kind of down near the bottom, you'll see it kind of bubbled right there because that's how it laid on the egg originally. So as I heat this material with my heat tool, again, a quick burst, not a long time in the same spot. It will actually kind of melt the material, but not melt it in a bad way. It kind of shrinks it onto the egg, like shrink wraps it onto the egg, and it takes that bubbling away. But again, I've only found it with this um, Arteza brand transfer paper. Um, and I could leave the link in the description box for you for that uh, material. But again, I found it only to work with this brand of transfer paper. Can I say that three times? So I just wanted to tell you about that. That said, I've shrinked that <laughs> uh, transfer paper on really well. I've got all my pre uh, uh, stenciling done with the green paint. Now I'm coming in with the Debbie's Design Diary uh, white swan chalk paint, doing the same process. Kind of pounce it on, wipe the excess off. Perfect. Just like this works best I get less bleeding I don't know that's been my process but you know you do a lot of you've stenciled before you do the best that you can do if you don't think you're good at stenciling then just splatter on paint it would look really cute we're going to do that here in a minute anyway so just kind of show you this process a little bit I allow it to dry and now you can see how crisp that is let's peel it off 
nice and crisp by heating that stencil material onto the egg gives us those crisp lines now there is a little bit of areas where it does bleed through but on this particular um egg or whatever i can actually just kind of scrape off that excess and then go back in with the green paint and kind of you know fix that up a little bit with the green paint around the edges so this is what it looks like looks really nice now i'm going to come in with that white swan paint watered down with my fan brush and by tapping my fan brush add some splatters on there so see if you did this just splattered and maybe drew some cute little hearts with paint or stenciled some hearts would look so cute or do those rub on words and then splatter around it would look perfectly cute for your design so hopefully i'm not all over the place and you kind of understood what i did but there it is for you so now i'm using one of these hearts from dollar tree and i'm just kind of coming in and painting around the edge we're going to uh, get our little tag ready for the front of our project now i've got some scrap paper here i traced around my heart and then i cut it oh about a eighth of an inch shorter all the way around so a little bit of the perimeter of that wood will show around our paper and then those of you might be new to my channel I love to take my paper to my sewing machine I sew on it just like it's regular fabric I use like a size 10 or 11 needle depending what came in the manufacturer you know whatever brand it is they'll have a 10 or 11 in it you can see how it's sewn it's a little crooked don't really care I think it adds to the charm I use all polyester thread just because my sewing machine likes it but all cotton thread works wonderful too uh, stitch length set on four and then I like to take the open end of my scissor blades and scrape around the edges giving it a little bit of rustic charm I think that just lends to that even more texture that I like and then we'll go ahead and I use beacon Fabri-Tac glue here and I'm just gluing it both sides of my heart now I'm using these rub-ons from Dollar Tree I've cut out the word spring and I'm just going to lay it on here kind of at an angle because I know the way my heart will hang. It'll kind of hang at that angle. And so I'll get the word on here. You just kind of rub it on. It's really easy. And then you peel up that little transfer sheet. And I'm going to cut out a few more places um, on this rub on uh, sheet and kind of give it a little bit of a collage look like it looks on the sheet as well. So I've got that part so far, so I'm going to come over here and cut a little bit more out, kind of collage up my tag a little bit, because I love the way that looks on that actual rub on there. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing on uh, the tag and just add a little bit more collage feature to it. I'm just using like um, some uh, tweezers here. You can use popsicle stick or tweezers or anything like that to rub it on with. And then we'll go ahead and glue that on to the front of our tag here. Looks really cute. I'm going to use my Cropodile. We are Memory Keepers Cropodile hole punch to add a hole. I've got some sisal here. I'm going to add some of this on too as well. I'll leave a link down below where you can find that sisal. And then I've got a bow here that I have made uh, using some ribbon from Walmart. I've got a little twine bow here. I've added a uh, bead on each side, a little tiny bead on each side on the tails. And I'm just tying a knot here at the end so my little beads don't fall off. Since I used two pieces of twine for this bow, I've got like four tails, right? So I'm adding four little beads here, two on each side, just like this. Looks really cute. I've got a little bulb safety pin here. I find these at Walmart in the sewing section. I love these because they just look a little more decorative than the regular safety pin. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this twine bow to the front of our uh, ribbon, and then I'm going to attach this tag to the front of our bow ensemble with that bulb pin perfect kind of fluff up my loops then i'm going to take some of this sisal i've painted my um forgot to mention at the beginning i painted that black candlestick holder white with that debbie's design diary diy white swan chalk paint and then I added sisal right underneath that and added my little bow ensemble again gluing it all with the beacon fabritat glue here and then we're going to get our egg on here, but our egg's going to be wobbly, right? So I started out, I was going to use some of this foam tape from Dollar Tree. We want to stabilize our egg. And then I decided that it just kind of made it a little too tall, but I left it in to show you this option. But I ended up pulling off this foam tape and just adding Beacon Fabri-Tac glue at the bottom. All around that bottom and setting it on there. I had to hold it down for a minute or two, get our egg attached. But once I do that, that makes this project complete.
before we move on to our next DIY surprise, I know those of you that were with us last week, Wendy White Sparrow Living Luke 12 6 here on YouTube, we did a video collaboration last week. And since you all enjoyed it, we decided to do it for a second week in a row. Here are some sneak peeks of what Wendy will be doing in her video. I will make sure I leave her link in the description box for you. Make sure you go check it out after watching my video. Hope you're as excited as we are for week number two collaboration. So let's move on to project number two. So for this project, I have this container I got at Christmas, had a light in and I pulled it out. But I know a lot of you have the Dollar Trees with just the plain unfinished wood containers or you could use a regular box. And then I got three of these carrots. Now you could leave the wire all the way in it, but you're going to have to cut off the excess because it is too long, you know, measure it for your container. Or what I did is I wanted my carrot a lot more wobbly. So I kind of just twisted it back and forth and was able to detach it from the top. And then I pulled it apart a little bit and used my wire cutters and cut off that edge there but it is really hard to do so if you have hands that might not be able to handle that you might want to just only cut off the excess at the bottom and leave the rest in there I'm gonna be using this terracotta shade Dixie Belt chalk paint and in this Waverly chalk paint and color and like moss and then I'm using a pouncy brush now I started out there's two ways to do this I started out just pouncing the paint on I'm just going to do the outside because I don't mind that little bit of darker shade on the inside of that swirly and then I do two coats heat setting it in between doing it this way it's going to give you a really subtle subtle texture and you could leave it like that if you want here's what it looks like kind of before and after you can see how kind of subtle it is okay but what I wanted is I wanted it a little bit more texture. So I'm using just actual sand, the white sand you can get at Dollar Tree. You could use baking soda as well. And I'm just mixing in enough here just to kind of get it the thickness that I want into the paint. And then I'm going to use the same process. I'll do it on this one that hasn't been done so you can see the difference. Pouncy brush, pouncing it up and down, heat setting it in between, and I'll do it two coats. And you can see how floppy my <laughs> carrot is without that wire down the center, but I kind of just love that. But if you don't want it that floppy, leave it in. So here's what it looks left and right, adding the sand, not adding the sand. You can choose how you want to do it, whatever your taste is. I did the same thing on the leaves with the green paint. I added sand to it and I pouncy brushed it on a couple of coats. Gives it all nice texture. And then I'm coming in with that... Uh, drop cloth paint here and painting a kind of an off-white texturing around the edges of my box a little bit inside too and then I've got so in case it's seen a little bit and then I've got this uh paper from Hobby Lobby and I've sewed around the edges and I'm distressing around the edges just like we did in the first project here's where you can see with and without that distressing technique and then once I get all that done we'll go ahead and start gluing it around I did the outer portion of the box of course and then the very bottom because the bottom had a light in it like I said earlier and I took that light out so it kind of leaves a little hole kind of get the glue on ahead of time here so we can just kind of go really quickly around the edges and see this hole want to cover that up that doesn't look pretty <laughs> And then I'm using some styrofoam from Dollar Tree, of course. And I love to use this paint tool from Dollar Tree as kind of my styrofoam cutter because it's a really wide one. It works perfect. I'm going to push it way down in and I'm going to cut another little piece on top. Love that tool. It works perfect. <laughs> Cuts the styrofoam really well. And I'm just setting it in here. I'm not gluing it because it's really tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and use one of these wood hearts again, just like we did in the first project. And I'm going to use this um, textured paint like we did on the carrots um, onto the heart because, you know, we have all that texture on those carrots. I kind of want to bring it down onto our decorative element on our container so that, you know, it looks nice and cohesive. Okay, and again, if you can't find one of these containers at Dollar Tree, you know, those gift boxes with the lid on top would work wonderful. Okay, so what I did for my quote here is I printed it off on the computer. And so I use Microsoft Publisher Program. You could use Microsoft Word. You print it out on your paper, okay, and you, you know, run your paper through, print it out. Now, this is, you know, I've already cut out of it, but run it through, print it out, and then you can flip it over and kind of put it up to the light. You can kind of see where your quote is and then lay your heart on it where you need to on there and then trace it and cut it out and then glue it on to your heart. 
So nice and easy. You don't need an electronic cutting machine. You don't need a stencil. Works wonderful. Okay, so we're gonna get this glued on. Both sides, get our papers glued on and use my crocodile tool here again and punch a little hole. And then I'm gonna use this bulb pin again. I love these because it's got a nice thick end there so it just holds a lot in there. Set that to the side for a minute. And I'm gonna bring in, this is the ribbon like I used on the first one from Walmart, got it at Christmas time. Couple of beads here. And I'm gonna also bring in some twine. I've already got it tied in a bow and ready and some moss here. I got mine at Joann's, but I know Dollar Tree has moss. And I'm gonna tie my ribbon around the box as a whole instead of just gluing a bow on front. Get it into a nice cute little bow shape here and adjust my tails, kind of cut it at a slant down there. And then I'm gonna kind of, uh, you know, wavy up my little tails here. And then I'm gonna add some sisal again here, right in the center of the bow. So again, using kind of the same materials, but both of our projects, of course, are looking a little different. And then I'm gonna add my beads onto the tails of my twine bow here. Tie a little knot, of course, so our beads don't fall off. Nice and easy, both sides. I like to make one side a little longer than the other just because that's the way I like it, little decorative touch. And then I decided I want to add a little wood carrot. Now I got these wood carrots and our next project has a little bunny on it. I will leave the link in the description box for you. I have a friend that does these, um, but I know that a lot of your Dollar Trees are out right now have these wood carrots and bunnies. So, you know, of course you could use that. I painted it in the same colors as the other carrots and I drilled a little hole in the top. Um, and then I'm just sanding around the edges, give a little distressed look. And then here's the bulb pin again. I took it off of the heart and you can see how thick it is, um, the wood, and it fits really nicely in that bulbous area of the pin. So that's why I like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin it back to the heart here and go ahead and pin it up onto my bow ensemble. And then I'm gonna use a little glue here to kind of hold the carrot in place so it doesn't fall over my quote. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stuff my carrots in. Now I, these are wiggly, right? So I wanna make sure that I'm gonna use this little tool again and uh, spatula, it's the thinner one from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna really push that way down into that styrofoam so these uh, carrots, these wiggly carrots don't move around. Okay, and then I'm gonna start adding some of these moss in here and I add a little bit down in the center of the carrots as well to kind of cover up where I cut that wire off. But then once I do that, this project is complete. Let's move on to our last project, number three. So for this project, I am actually starting with this sign. You really don't need it at all because you can draw your own carrots, but I happen to have it in my supply, but I only have one and I want three carrots. So I end up making a third carrot anyway out of some really thick, sturdy cardboard. So if you have two of these signs, you'll have three carrots. Or if you only have one sign, you have two carrots and make your own carrot, or you can make all three carrots. <laughs> There's lots of options. And I'm gonna actually trace the bottom of this because I'm gonna cut the greenery off and replace it. And I wanna cover that uh, backside and make it all um, you know, pretty on the backside. So I end up cutting um, enough pieces to make my carrots double so I can sandwich the greenery in between. I hope that's understandable. I'm just tracing around that top edge so I can mark it and know where I need to cut that greenery off the top. Perfect. And then I'm gonna peel off the paper. If you're using you know, one of these signs, peel off the paper as much as you can, of course. Um, and then, of course, if you made your own carrots, you don't have to worry about that part. And then I'm just using some sandpaper to just kind of, you know, smooth off that top part where I cut it off. 
I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these hearts again. Now, I didn't want it as rounded on the side, so I just took my scissors and cut it a little bit more straight. You know, just choice. And I'm using a wood bunny here. It's the, from the same place that I got the wood carrots, craftingwithkimber.com. I'll leave that below in the description box for you. Of course, if your Dollar Tree has the packages of wood bunnies and carrots, you may already have that on hand. Now I'm using Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth, and I'm just going to paint around all my carrots and the heart and the bunnies, all the same color, just around the edges, because, you know, we'll cover up the center and get all of this done here. We want to make our edges look nice. I love this drop cloth paint because it's just a nice off white shade. Um, and I can't, I had a distributor here that I could buy it from now, but I don't anymore. She stopped selling this paint. So I just find it on Etsy. Look up Dixie Belle drop cloth paint. Um, you can find it. So now I'm using some sandpaper and just kind of sanding and distressing around the edges. As you can see here, I traced all my pieces and I cut them out already and I sewed around the edges just like the first couple of projects, distressed around the edges, and now we're going to cover all our pieces. The back of the carrot's covered completely and the front of the carrot, when I traced it, I cut it out about a quarter inch shorter all the way around so we allow that little bit of the outside of the carrot to show. Otherwise, why do we distress it, right? I'm gonna go ahead and get our heart covered here back is done completely covered the front is cut again a little bit short just to leave that edge show a little bit and then yes I even did it for the bunny why I do this to myself I don't know but boy does it a task to sit and sew around that tiny little bunny but by golly I got it done and we're gonna cover the front of our bunny now I've got some just regular twine here um, I cut about two inches in length. You're going to need four pieces for each carrot. And I'm just going to kind of, you know, um, distress and unravel both ends of our twine. Because when we put this into the carrot by unraveling that bottom edge just a little bit, it will allow our twine to lay a little bit flatter when we sandwich it in between. Just like this, it'll lay a little flatter when we sandwich it in between our two pieces here. Okay, so just unravel the bottom edge just a little bit. If you don't want to use rope, you can use some of this or some of this Excelsior or Raffia from Dollar Tree. You could even use some of the green moss would look cute. Anything you want. So here's my rope ready to go. Before I do that, I'm going to take some of that drop cloth paint watered down and my little fan brush, dip it into that paint, and then, of course, wipe off the excess and then tap the brush and make some little splatters on here just to give it a little more something something and then i even did it as you can see here on my twine a little bit real soft but it is there and now we're going to go ahead and get our newly created carrot tops on i'm just going to glue it down using the beacon fabrtac glue and then we'll go ahead and add glue to all the rest of it of course and then we'll sandwich that with our pretty carrot right on top. And I want that to be really, really nice, nice and flat. So I'm going to use some of these little clamps from Dollar Tree. Clamp it at the top and the bottom just for a couple of minutes until it sets on each of the carrots. That Fabri-Tac glue will set up within about a minute. But I let it go a couple of minutes because, you know, it was around the rope and it's kind of thick. The thicker that glue is, it does take a little bit longer to set, but normal use is about a minute. So I let it go a couple of minutes. All nice and flat. Now, I want to layer my carrots like this. So I'm going to turn it over on the back and mark where those carrots are going to sit on the edges of that center carrot so that I know where I can add my glue. And then I'm going to lay those other two carrots right back on top. And I'll just let that set up for a couple of minutes before we move on with decorating. Perfect. This would look so cute on a tiered tray, those of you that like that. I'm going to do my crocodile tool again here, add a little hole in the heart. And then we're going to layer our bunny right on top. I'm going to mark it again here so I know what part's going to stick off and I don't need to add the glue there. I'm going to layer just right in the center of our little heart. Got some carrots, we need our bunny. And then I've got two thin pieces of twine here. Added a small little bead on each end. Of course, tie a knot and cut off the excess. And it's a really tiny, tiny bow. 
because we're going to use this to make the little bow to give our little bunny a little bow with the neck, just a little something, something. I've been wanting to say something, something a lot, huh? That was the second time I used it, or really the third time because I said it again. <laughs> I'm going to take my twine and get it around the carrots where I want it to be, and then on the back, kind of lower it down a little bit, add a little glue because, you know, the twine's kind of wrapped around a rounded surface, so we all want that to stay in place. Add a little glue and hold it there till it sets. And then I'm going to add a little sisal right in the center here and finish wrapping our twine back around so that way our twine won't slide off our carrots and make a little bow right over the top of that sisal. This turned out really rustic and super cute. I kind of like how it is. And of course, I'm going to bring in some more beads again, and we're going to add those larger beads right at the bottom of our tails of our twine ribbon here, of course, twine bow. And then we're going to use another bulb pin again, and we're going to pin that heart ensemble to the front of our twine bow. Make our knots, of course, and cut off the excess so our beads don't fall off. And now I wanted to add just a little bit of decoration right, you know, at the top of the carrot, kind of at the greenery part there. The twine that I used on the bigger bow is a little too thick, so try to find like a little smaller diameter twine because, you know, you want to see it, but you don't really want to see it. <laughs> so I'm going to put one of these on each of our carrot tops there. And once I do that, that makes this project complete. So I really hope you love how our spring projects turned out today. I love the farmhouse of them, the rustic of them, of course. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel or you're coming over from Wendy's channel, welcome. If you like what you saw here today, please, before you click off, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video from me. I just want to say I really love having you all here with me every single week as we craft together. It means the world to me. Your support just warms my heart. Thank you again, Wendy, for doing week two of this fun, inspirational collaboration. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Sometimes it seems like as we are praying through a storm, we look around and we see testimonies of others, how their prayers are answered. Healings are happening, relationships are being restored, finances are blessed, and we're so happy for them, but we wonder, when do I get my prayers answered? It seems like I'm seeing these miracles everywhere, yet I still remain standing on the sidelines. There comes a point when you need that healing of your own. You need to hear your name attached to that document. Sometimes we'll be pushed to our absolute limits, the limits of our patience and our faith, but I'm begging you not to lose hope. Don't lose patience, don't lose heart, and certainly don't lose faith. It seems like in the last few videos, I've brought this up time and time again, you know, about how I'm dealing with answered prayer and to keep waiting and, you know, not give up and not lose hope. And I think it's because God is really wanting us to hear him. He is hammering it home. I mean, I think this is the third time this topic has come up and I've really felt like this is what God wants you to hear. You must believe that God is bigger than big and closer than close. I want you to keep praying with faith that it will work out in his way and in his time. Keep asking, keep believing, keep knocking and don't give up. And maybe for now, that's his answer for us. Don't give up. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.